Hi, my name is Chris Ryan. Welcome to Forest Varden and welcome to this four part video series discussing the backswing. We're going to be giving you all the tools that you need to ensure that your backswing is in perfect shape for the 2018 series. We're going to be looking at what you need to do to create power. We're going to be looking at how you can control the club face and how you can control the shape of your backswing. We're going to be focusing on three main areas. We're going to be looking at how the body moves in the backswing in terms of your pivot and your rotation. We're then going to move on into video two to looking at what the arms do in terms of the arm fold, the arm plane, the arm swing, and how that really contributes to what your golf swing looks like. Video three is going to be looking at exactly what the golf club does in the backswing, the twists that you apply to the golf club, the angle that you move the club on through your golf swing and how those apply to ultimately the downswing and the ball flight that results. Video four, we're gonna look at some drills, some training methods and some training aids that you can use in practice, which are gonna help you work on the things that we've discussed in the previous three videos. So make sure you stay tuned for this four part video series. I really think it's gonna help you better understand what contributes to the backswing, different elements, different areas. It's also gonna help you better understand your backswing it's going to maybe get you to think about the backswing in a slightly different way, but more importantly, it's going to give you some really practical things that you can do to improve your backswing and hopefully play some better golf in 2018. So welcome to video number one. In this video, we're talking about the role that the body plays in the backswing. We're going to be looking at the angle at which you rotate your body on. We're going to be looking at how you rotate looking from the face on view. And we're also going to be looking at what you need to do to start to shift some pressure in your backswing, which is going to ultimately get some better flow into your golf swing and create some more power. So the first thing that we're going to discuss in this video is that we rotate on what we call an inclined plane. And very simply, the reason we do that is because the golf ball is on the ground or very, very close to the ground. So even when it's teed up, it's, it's only a small amount away from the ground. And that really influences how we have to set our body and then ultimately how we have to rotate our body. So if we were to play the golf ball out at eye level, we could stand pretty normally to that. We would therefore be able to move our body on a more of a horizontal angle. So you would notice how my shoulders are very level, my hips are very level and my knees are very level. Now, unfortunately, the golf ball isn't out here. It's actually down on the ground. So that really influences our setup in that we have to tilt over to the golf ball. That means that when we rotate, we are rotating on an angle. And this is really the first uh, you know, real concept we need to understand in the golf swing if we're to make a good backswing with the body. So we should see, as we rotate back, we should see an angle in the shoulders. Notice how my lead shoulder is much lower than my trail shoulder. We would therefore also see an angle in the hips. My lead hip is lower than my trail hip and by a very very small amount we would see an angle in the knees where my lead knee is lower than my trail knee. Now this is something which is demonstrated by all of the best golfers in the world. Yes we all have different amounts of angles based on someone's maybe how tall they are or how they start their golf swing in terms of their setup but everybody will, everybody will rotate on an angle. Now a really common trait that I see amongst amateur golfers is their rotations can often become too level. So you'll see how my shoulders don't look as if they're really on a particularly, uh, you know, on a particularly steep angle. My hips aren't on a particularly good angle and my knees aren't on, on a particularly good angle. And that's a really, really common trait that we see. Very, sim uh, very often, this is just through concept. So the golfer maybe doesn't quite grasp the concept of what we should be doing. So how do we rotate on this inclined angle? Well, it really all starts from the ground up and how we use our knees, which in turn is going to influence how we use our hips, which in turn is going to influence how we use our shoulders. Now, the first drill I want you to do, and this is really, really simple, and you can do this anywhere. You can do this at home, in the office, at the driving range. It doesn't require a golf club. It doesn't require you hitting any golf balls. What you're going to do is you're going to place your golf club down. You're going to take your setup and your posture to a golf ball if you've got one, Obviously, if you haven't, it doesn't really matter. And you're just going to take your posture and just put your arms out to the side of you. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to feel like I make a rotation. And as I make a rotation, I'm going to feel that my lead arm begins to point more down towards the golf ball. Now, in doing that, you'll notice that I have now created a good angle across my shoulders. 
I've created a good angle across my hips, and I've created a good angle across my knees. When I do this and I perform this very, very simple little exercise, many good things happen. You'll notice just how much my knees have changed flex. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Just how much I've had to rotate my hips and just exactly the angle I've managed to get my shoulders onto. It wouldn't feel particularly normal to make this kind of move, but this is something we see all too often in the golf swing. So that's something you can do very, very sim simply at home, in the office, or at the driving range. Now, I always like to think about the golf swing in the body working from the ground up. So if we are to make this good rotation on this inclined plane, a couple of things have to happen in the lower body. My knees have to what we call change flex. So when I begin my back swing, my trail leg has to lose a little bit of flex. My lead leg has to increase a little bit in flex. I also have to feel like my right hip is moving a little bit up and behind me. So that's kind of up and behind me. Again, that's going to help me create that good angle. Those two movements are going to make it much easier for me to create the right movement in my upper body. Very often, if we see the shoulders too level at the top of the golfing, and this is something we see quite commonly, we see that from the ground up, the knees maybe don't work as well as they should, the hips therefore don't work as well as they should, it's very difficult then to get the shoulders on a good angle. So the first thing in this video is understanding that we rotate on an inclined angle. Because the golf ball is on the ground, we have to understand this and we have to make that happen in our body. Try some simple drills to get this feel and understand what it feels like to get your body rotating on that good angle. So the second part of this video is looking at just how we rotate in terms of how much rotation we do have and whether or not we have any lateral movement within that rotation. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see a golfer, you know, assume a very, very good starting position, have a really good concept of the angle that we need to rotate on. But when they perform that movement, there is excessive movement away from the target. Now, it would be less common, but we may also see some excessive movement towards the target. Now, what we would like to see would be what I class as a centered turn, where we don't see a huge amount of movement in the head, and we don't see a huge amount of lateral movement in the hips. So, I'm just gonna demonstrate that for you. So we're gonna take my starting position, and I'm gonna feel like I make a rotation where I don't really make any kind of lateral movement away from the golf ball. What you should see here is that if you were to put a line on my lead hip and a line on my trail hip, you should see that there is a, a contact, I maintain contact, I should say, with the line on my lead hip. But I've moved slightly away from the line on my trail hip. This would be a fantastic guide to look for in how we rotate the hips. You will also notice, hopefully, how whilst there is some head rotation, where my head rotates away from the target, my head doesn't move laterally off the golf ball in the back swing. Now, again, concept here is absolutely key. Trying to make a centre turn is something which many golfers struggle with. I believe this is on the understanding that they are trying to actively, in the back swing, shift weight over onto this right side. This is not something that we should be really trying to do. We are trying to move pressure in the golf swing. We are not trying to shift body weight. There is a big, big difference in the two. We're gonna to come to a little bit of pressure shift in a moment. But I really want you to focus on making a center turn. And as a center turn, that's gonna enable us to start the downswing more efficiently and it's gonna give us a greater chance of achieving an impact with many of the things that we would like to have, the weight forward, the handle forward with an iron club, the descending blow again with an iron club, allowing us to compress the ball and get some nice speed into that golf ball. Again, with the iron club, that compression is really, really key to generating the correct ball flight. So again, we can do some really quite simple drills. So we're gonna take my starting position and I'm just gonna feel like I, and again, I could do this in front of a mirror or I could video myself, that's really gonna help. But as I rotate, I want to really avoid any kind of lateral movement. And I wanna feel like as I'm rotating, I'm staying very, very centered over the golf ball. This is a really, really simple drill, which is gonna give you some good ideas about what it's gonna feel like to make this center turn. Now, you'll also notice that I'm trying to get my shoulders to around about 90 degrees. You can see how the grip of my golf club is kind of pointing down towards the golf ball. In order for me to do that, I had to make 
a good amount of turn in my hip area. All too often I will see golfers where they don't turn the hips enough. Therefore, they are unable to turn the shoulders enough. What they will often then do is they will cheat. They will start to then lift up to give them a greater range of motion. They may well start to extend the upper body too much to again increase the range of motion. So we often see when a golfer under turns through the hip area, they make compensations elsewhere to get that club to its full length. Those compensations will often manifest themselves in a, in a movement off the golf ball, or as we said there, maybe an extension too much of the spine where the head moves towards the target. So really limiting how much you turn your hips can be quite detrimental to your golf game and ultimately how you pivot in the backswing. So I want you to be quite free in those hips and allow them to rotate because that's going to enable you to get a good upper body position, a centre turn. And if we can achieve a good centre turn, we are going to find impact is much, much easier to achieve. So the final thing we're going to discuss in this video to ensure your body is moving correctly in the backswing is a pressure shift. Now a pressure shift is very simply where you start to use your feet and their interaction with the ground to shift some pressure between the feet. Now this is really, really key for a couple of things. If we can shift the pressure correctly, we tend to find our rhythm and our timing is greatly improved. It's also a great way to get some more energy and some more speed into the golf club, which is ultimately going to help you hit the golf ball further. If you're a golfer who really struggles with distance, you don't hit the ball as far as maybe your playing partners or maybe as far as you feel like you should, there is a very good chance that you're not shifting your pressure correctly. Now, the reason we're discussing this in this video is because this is something I see, unfortunately, many golfers do incorrectly. So a lot of golfers out there are aware that a, a pressure shift or a, a weight shift maybe is important, but they can often get this a little bit, you know, unfortunately can do this a bit incorrect and they start to make this lateral move. Now we've just discussed the pivot from face on and making sure we stay centered. So how do we create a pressure shift while we're staying centered? What I really want you to do is take a starting position and I just want you to move the golf club a couple of feet back and a couple of feet through. Now as you do this, you're probably not going to really feel much movement in the feet and the interaction with the ground isn't going to feel particularly different. But as you start to increase that length, I want you to really feel how your feet and how their interaction with the ground is helping control this movement. Now as I start to lengthen this swing, you can see how I'm lifting up each heel as I make this movement. This is me shifting my pressure through this golf swing. So as I make my back swing, my lead heel lifts. And as I make my through swing, my trail heel lifts. Now, to do that, I'm not physically moving my center of mass. I'm not moving my body weight forward and back. I'm very simply changing the pressure in my feet. So as I make my back swing, the pressure is building under my trial side. Now, it's almost impossible to feel this by placing the golf club into static positions. So if I was to make my setup and a back swing and stop, I'm not going to feel a pressure shift because that's a static position. A pressure shift is something that happens when the golf swing is in motion. So incredibly difficult to feel this statically. So if you're going to go home and, and maybe stand in front of a mirror and, and rehearse some, let's say some rotations or some pivots, that's fantastic, but you're not going to feel a pressure shift. So a pressure shift has to be practiced in motion. So that little drill I gave you there is a fantastic exercise to help you start to feel what a pressure shift is like. We can move the pressure between the feet, but we're not making any lateral movements off the golf ball. So in summary, if we're looking at the role that the body plays in the backswing, we need to understand that the body rotates on an angle due to the fact that the ball is on the ground and we set up with our body tilted forward. Number two is really to understand how we pivot. We want to make a centered turn with a good rotation. Once we've done those two things, we really want to feel that our pressure is shifting under our trail side as we make our backswing. I would look for, when I coach using my body track, I look for about 80% of the pressure under the trail side at the top of the backswing, at its most extreme. So a pressure shift, 
a good rotation and a good rotation on an angle are the key ingredients that you need to ensure that your body is moving correctly in your backswing. Let me go ahead and hit one. So I'm going to really try and include all those three elements, focusing on what the body does, and see if we can click this ball down this range. So hopefully that video was helpful. That is number one of this four part video series. Make sure you stay tuned for episodes two, three and four, which are going to be covering the arms, the club itself. And then video four is all about drills that you can do to ensure that your backswing is on point because that is definitely going to help you improve your golf. Thank you very much for watching. All the usual stuff is down below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming videos. Make sure you like this video if you did like it and also place a comment in the box down below. Love to get your thoughts and hopefully we should see you back here again for video two.